بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم الحمد لله رب العالمين والصلاة والسلام على والصلاة والسلام على محمد وعلى آله وصحبه معين أما بعد فعوذ بالله من الشيطان الرجيم بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم إن الله اصطفى آدم ونوح وآل إبراهيم وآل عمران على العالمين وقال تعالى وما خلقت الجن والإنس إلا ليعبدون وقال تعالى الفلامين ذلك الكتاب لا ريب فيه So my dear brothers and sisters, inshallah today I'll uh, introduce uh, the book Al-Rad al mataqiyin by Imam Ibn Taymiyyah rahimahullah ta'ala. And before starting that, I'll just uh, you know, explain uh, that my own uh, you know, relation with this book. <coughs> so in, I, because I studied in a madrasa, a small madrasa in India. So in Madrasa in India, one of the important things in the curriculum is Greek logic and philosophy. So I studied in the Greek logic and philosophy. And you know, when you learn something like that and you become impressed, that the whole thing is so impressive. So I became, but then I came to the natural ulama and I learned there again, you know, logic and philosophy, both by one of the very famous teacher, uh, uh, he's an expert of the philosophy and Greek logic in the whole India, Mona Burifan Nadvi. So I studied with him. So, you know, so much, you know, influenced and impressed by that, and we used to debate and discuss, and we think, you know, that, you know, the reasoning is, the, you know, the top reasoning and the best reasoning, and all those things, like, you know, how they define, how they make, you know, argument, so that how, you know, people, people debate and discuss in the madrasa. Then I read, read one of the articles written by uh, Allama Shibin Omani, and in the time the book, Arrad al so, in, in India, uh, you know, Ibn Taymiyyah never has been very popular, basically. Very, you know, very, very, very few people know about him, and very, very few people have read him. Uh, uh, you know, among the past one, the one who really, uh, you know, wrote about him and, and, and appreciated him uh, is Waliullah Dehlavi, Shah Waliullah Dehlavi, and actually he wrote a risala uh, uh, on him, which is like a, a letter to some, one, one of his uh, disciples, and inshallah I'll quote from that. So he's the first person you can see, big figure in India, who appreciated Ibn Taymiyyah. And then after that, again, you can see it is very quiet, you know, not many people interested. And Shibir Nu'mani, he was in India, you know, he was born in 1857 and died in 1914. He's a great reformer in India. And his interest himself, he was a man of the literature, Urdu and Persian literature, actually also Arabic, he wrote something in Arabic as well. But, and he also a poet, you know, in Persian language and Urdu, Urdu language both. But uh, at the same time, he was a you know, great expert of the Greek logic and philosophy and a man of the Kalam. He wrote many, many things. And he was so much in praise of Ghazali and Razi and all those people. So Shri Nu'man, you know, he, and he wrote so much about Al-Kalam and Al-Mur Kalam and Al-Ghazali. At the end of his life, he found a manuscript of Ibn Taymiyyah's this book, Al-Rad al mataqin He never has read Ibn Taymiyyah. So when he read this manuscript of Ibn Taymiyyah, Al-Rad al mataqin he wrote an article. And in you know, a very nice introduction of Radha Mataqeen. And then he said that when I read this one, you know, now in front of him, Ghazali and Razi, there seems to be nothing. That's what he said. They are, you know, in Urdu we say, hey, Ghazali or Razi, dono he chanadrati. It means both seems to be nothing. It is a big statement because to him, Ghazali or Razi were the best people, you know, you know most authentic people, you know, and thinkers. And now, after reading just one book of Ibn Taymiyyah, Arrad al mataqeen that's what he says. And he says, if I remain alive, it is, ob- it is fard upon me, obligatory upon me to write a biography of this man. But anyway, he died, and the book was not published. Then his student, Mona Sayyid Sulaiman Adavi, he got the manuscript and he published nicely with good introduction. So I think that was the first time this book had been published. Arrad al mataqeen by Mona Sayyid Sulaiman Adavi, you know, his, his muqaddam is still available, uh, people, people can see. So, you know, then I read this introduction so, uh, by Shibri Nomani, uh, very nicely done. So I basically impressed, and then I read Arad al Mataqeen myself. And really, because once you know what Greek logic is, once you know clearly what they're proud of that, and you read what Ibn Taymiyyah has written, then, you know, if you think properly, so then when I read this, you know, Greek logic basically became to me very, very weak, basically, you know, nothing to defend. You know, uh, I, I, you know, I knew that in Wild Halaq, you know, he has translated the summary of, you know, Arad al-Mataqeen by, by Suyuti, but I never read before. This morning, somebody emailed to me, introduction of that, uh, and I, I, I agree with him, really. And he said very nicely, in the time near the refutation was, you know, like a first devastating attack against Greek logic. Basically, after that, finish. 
Greek logic, because nobody can, you know, when Ghazali wrote Tahafut al philosopher, you know, Rushta can come easily write Tahafut, Tahafut. You know, it's easy. But in the Taymiyyah, when he criticized, and Al Halak also says the same thing actually, when he was Taymiyyah criticizing Greek logic, he's not going to the you know, marginal issues. He said that now in modern times there are many criticism against Greek logic, but they're very marginal. In the Taymiyyah, he knows the matter properly, heart of the matter properly. So when he criticized, he criticized those issues which are clear, like you know, the heart in Greek logic. And every single criticism against Greek logic, you will, when you read, when you shall, I'll, I'll, I'll translate some of them. In every single one, so powerful, you think after this really, it, no survival. He does not need anything more. But he goes one after that. One other thing about Ibn Taymiyyah is, in the, in, among all the people who, actually, who deal with the reasoning, Ibn Taymiyyah is the first person who, re, who understands the problem very quickly. He knows what the real problem is. So he, he reaches to that, that main thing. Many people don't understand what the real problem is. He understands what the real problem is of the Greek thinkers, Greek philosophers, what the real problem actually is for the reason, uh, you know, uh, in general. You know, if you have read, you know, this article, which I, I think Faisal has emailed to you in the morning, if you read that, that inshallah will help you to understand what, what the problem actually is, uh, with the reasoning is. So anyway, Ibn Taymiyyah, you know, goes to the deep of the matter. And that way, and also another thing, keep in mind really, this man, Ibn Taymiyyah, he never claims to be a philosopher, and he's not a philosopher. He, he's not his, you know, he does not want, but one thing is, whatever he writes, he writes for the sake of Islam, he writes to save people from the error and from the mistake. That's it. So he does not criticize Greek logic, you know, uh, just to refute it. No, because he knows the, what is the harm of Greek logic uh, on Islam, on Islamic, in Islamic sciences, how it can corrupt the mind of the people. In one of his books, he says that Greek, you know, philosophy is basically corruption of the mind and the heart both. So his problem is that this is not right thinking. He wants to help people. It is not that he against Greek philosophy or logic. Actually, in, even in, in this book, Arrad al Mataqeen, he praises them a lot. He said in one of the places, you know, had there been no prophets, eh, these philosophers would have been the best people because they think they raise the right questions. So, you know, it's not against philosophy or reasoning, but he knows how harmful it is. So, inshallah, you, 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 know, you will see this. So, when I read Arrad al Mataqeen, then I became, this is the first book of the time I ever read. And then after that, I read that book many, many times. I also taught it, uh, discussed it. And every single question that Ibn Taymiyyah read, really, whenever I discuss in Nadat Ulama, in Deoband, in India, with all the scholars who actually praise Greek logic, I always discuss with them with full confidence. I, I never found among all the people who I met and discussed anybody who can answer any of these refutations. These people who have been studying Greek logic for a long, long time. Me, me, simple thing really is, you, Ibn Taymiyyah himself knows, and he, he understands, if Ibn Taymiyyah is you know, one of the people, he understands in the, in the weight of his argument very, very well. So he enjoys that. He knows that, you know, he's, basically, to, when, I, when I read Ibn Arad al what comes to my mind, image of Ibrahim al Islam. Ibrahim comes in the temple of the idols, it smashes one after the other, uh, you know, that's what I feel about Ibn Taymiyyah. Like in turning into the in temple of you know Greek philosophy and smashing one after the other with full hammering, you know not you know once just you know basically he knows that he has killed it, the, no no life, nothing. You you will see that this really is that what need really is. Muslim scholars at the one hand they should be excellent in Islamic sciences, in the sources, in the Quran, in the Sunnah, in the Arabic language, but at the same time they must understand you know the other sciences of their time. So when they need to, you know, to, to discuss with them, discuss with full confidence. That's what Ibn Taymiyyah is doing. So, you know, he's, he never you can feel that, you know, he has, basically, if you read Ibn Taymiyyah, read Ibn Sina, you can see same, same mind, same, uh, same thinking, understanding. But the one thing is Ibn Sina does not have guidance, and Ibn Taymiyyah knows philosophy, but he has got guidance. That difference. Otherwise, in understanding the philosophy, how it works, and understanding the logic, you know, both are very, very similar. Both are genius, but one has guidance and one does not have guidance. So this difference you can feel. But anyway, you know, when I, you know, whenever I read in, and this book become one of my favorite books. Alhamdulillah, I read many, many times. And in the book, it not only logic and philosophy, then even tell me because, you know, he, he always basically, he, he, he's criticizing them for the sake of Islam. So many, many problems of the usul of fiqh, the language, all these things keep coming and dealing, even he actually, he comes to the definitions of, of you know, people of the grammar, that how, after being influenced by Greek logic, how they change, what happened to them, in all those things. So this, you know, and again, let me repeat really, is that, you know, though I studied Greek logic philosophy before that, but many concepts only became clear to my mind 
when I read in the Tamil refutation, I realized that the problem, this is that how it thinks, it thinks. we never understood. It, many people, when they read the Greek logical philosophy, they really don't understand what, what, the, what the problem there is. They don't, they don't know. So this is amazing. Okay, and this one.